Hi there friends, we just had Stefan Georgiev on our show, one of the program managers of the Windows Virtual Desktop team, leading new app virtualization technology MSX App Attach. Hi everyone, super excited to be here, looking forward to uh, introducing MSX App Attach to you. And Stefan just shared with us how you can deploy applications to your WVD environment without installing them in your VMs or your images. Sound pretty cool? Join us because we're starting right now. Hi there friends, and welcome to Desktops in the Cloud, your new technical driven video podcast with guest speakers from Microsoft Engineering and as well the worldwide virtual desktop communities. And thanks to everyone who's been supporting us here at Desktops in the Cloud, which you can do by clicking the subscribe button and sharing our videos with others. If you want to appear in an episode, you can ping us on social media or our website, desktopsinthecloud.com. So this episode is all around simplicity, specifically around optimizing image management and as well application delivery with MSX App Attach. How cool would it be to assign and update applications on the fly without doing intense image management? So hi Stefan, how are you doing? Um, doing good, thanks for having me. So we know you of course, who you are, we work on a daily basis with you, but can you tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself and about your role within Microsoft? Absolutely. I would say we, you and me, we particularly work on nightly basis, because mostly it's during the night, <laughs> <laughs> but let, let's leave it there. So yeah, um, uh, again, my name is Stefan Georgiev, I'm a PM on the Remote Desktop Services team. That's the team uh, that owns, uh, obviously, Remote Desktop. Uh, server, but also owns Windows Virtual Desktop, the service in Azure, and I particularly specialize in everything that happens on the session host in the VM, and mainly, and lately, uh, that will be how can we deliver applications better and faster, and that evolved into MSX App Attach, and I'm here to talk about that. Yeah, the technology that you represent is really, uh, yeah, really amazing. Um, yeah, I hope uh, that we can share a little bit of that excitement as well with our viewers. So let's, uh, yeah, level set this uh, this audience and share a little bit more about like what MSX App Attach is, and as well, yeah, what you can achieve with it and how the architecture looks like. So can you share some information about that? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So um, generally with uh, MSX App Attach, and this is something that I would like to make uh, um, clear and it will make sense as we're going through this, but uh, we are having MSX, which is a packaging format that is the, the, the next iteration of an uh, integration of all the previous packaging format Microsoft has released. And that one is uh, very powerful by itself, has a, a, a tons of exciting features. And we are taking advantage of those in WVD, in VDI environments, by being able to dynamically deliver those MSX packages via MSX App Attach. And the architecture is very simple, because you have your session host pool in WVD, uh, you decide I'm gonna deliver these applications as MSX, uh, and then all you need to do is spin up a file share, put the package on the file share, we have uh, one extra step that we do there, which is preparing the MSX image. We'll talk about that in a second, but uh, once the image is on that network share, you go into the WVD portal, you configure and say like, this is the package that I want for this user group. You assign it, you go as that user and your applications are there. From the end user perspective, from the end user experience, they will never know that something was delivered via MSX App Attach or native install. The two are indistinguishable. So can you share a little bit more on what the procedure around MSX App Attach is? Yeah, um, sure. Um, so the, the very first thing is obviously get your applications MSX. That is uh, the big, uh, uh, the, the big work item. Once you have that MSX, uh, the MSX format by itself is a PK zip file with a manifest. So what we do in uh, order to speed it up and make it as fast as it is, is to take that uh, the content of the MSX package and put it in a VHD. And that is what we call the expansion process. Um, and there are many other benefits of why we want something to be in the VHD to obviously like 
mount one file over the uh, the network. It takes one IO to read even a small application of 200 files from the network share will take at least 200 IOPS. So by expanding your MSX into the MSX image, uh, you we remove all the penalties that you have to pay when you're doing that on the fly. Um, from once once your MSX image, which is usually a VHD or the new format SIM, SIMFS, uh, once it's in the network share, then what was going to happen is um, you already have your host pool created, and you and uh, you go into the UI and you uh, pretty much instruct the host pool. You instruct WD is telling it this host pool is going to have these packages available to all the users on that host pool. And then by using uh, group assignments, you can limit what user sees what application. And at that point, when the user walks into their machine, um, there's no PowerShell scripts, there's no GPOs, it's all handled by the RD agent. That, uh, those of you familiar with WVD know that for a VM to be part of WVD, you need to have the RD agent. So once the RD agents will do the heavy lifting of making sure that application, uh, sorry, all the MSX images have been uh, uh, mounted and staged. It will make sure that the right packages are registered for the right users, and you don't have to touch any code to get that uh, delivered to you. So it looks like from the picture that you're sharing here that we can have not only multiple applications inside a single VHD, but also multiple versions of the same application? Well, so uh, let me explain the side uh, that I have uh, shared here, and then let's chat about uh, your question about the multiple versions of the same application. So the most canonical example would probably be the most flexible is scenario one here on the screen, where uh, you take one MSX package and you put it in, you expand it into one VHD, uh, and you're done. And in my example, in scenario one, uh, the, the blue rectangle represents uh, the MSX application itself, and that's the entry point, if I have to use the developer term, to the application. Now, in scenario two, what we're having is we took two different applications, so think about Visual Studio and Project. We took two different applications and we expanded them into the same VHD. Why? I mean, we mount one VHD instead of having to mount two. Maybe we are worried about memory optimization, and maybe we're worried about some of the other uh, performance benefit, uh, performance impact from uh, mounting way too many images. And what's going to happen in that situation, since we have two packages, we're going to get two different applications. And again, from the perspective of the UI, and uh, it just works. We ha uh, happens automatically. Scenario three is a little bit more curious. So in MSX packages, there's also the concept of MSX bundles. But MSX packages generally can be multiple. Uh, so uh, in one MSX package and one MSX application can have multiple entry points. So think of it almost like as uh, the equivalent of uh, command line switches. So they may be related, maybe totally separate. Right? Could be one could be your uh, configuration for your client. The other one can be your server. Doesn't matter. But that is the scenario number um, um, uh, three here. And scenario number four is the most complicated one when we have the mix of one and three. That's why I call it one plus three, and luckily it was four. So in that scenario, it's it's all a, a big mess because you have multiple applications with multiple entry points in one VHD. Uh, and this is you, you should not really worry about that. It's just it's all going to be handled through the UI and through the agent. Uh, but it's good to talk about it. And the main thing we got to remember here is we have the MSX image that we need to upload into Azure. We have the MSX package that we got from our vendor, or we repackaged it ourselves. And then we talk about the MSX application, and that is what the user interacts with. All that is totally transparent to the end user. So Stefan, can you explain a little bit about how uh, MSIX app attach is different than app layering technologies like AppV? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I get asked a bit uh, about it pretty much every time I talk about MSX app attach, so I'm uh, well prepared for that one. Uh, so historically, when we're talking about application layering formats, you were always forced to repackage. Why? Because there was no developer house in the world that says, like, I'm going to deliver an app V to you, right? They would deliver an EXE, an MSI, advanced installer, or some, something else. 
And then you as an organization had to hire a vendor or have an in-house team that does the repackaging. With MSX Appatach, that is gone. We again, we are using the same MSX package that you get from the Microsoft Store that eventually, and we have uh, ISVs and software houses adopting it. They have already adopted it. It's been uh, in the industry for two plus years now. So once you get that MSX package, there's no repackaging. The expansion process, it's, it's that, it's just called expanding it, it's unzipping. Like there's no, you have to repackage it, you have to worry about compliance, like uh, testing and re verifying that the application work. It works exactly the same, nothing has changed. So that's the main difference between, uh, well, that's one of the main difference between application, existing application learning solutions and MSX app attach is you don't have to repackage. Now for the observable future, those legacy applications that are not MSX uh, app attach or MSX to be more precise yet, those you have to repackage. But as, as time goes on and more and more of those applications migrate, um, that will disappear, will be gone as uh, operation you have to do. The other interesting thing about MSX App Attach is that it's MSX to be more precise. It's part of the native operating system. It's not like AppV where you have to put an extra client and an extra agent and a, an extra uh, server to be able to do the, the real streaming. Uh, it's part of the OS. A lot of the things why we're so performant, why we're so fast is because we are able to directly call the underlying operating system APIs. And the, the, the dependency we take on the RD agent is very intentional, is because we want to uh, do it in WVD and we want to test it in WVD. And for it to be in WVD, you have to have the agent. Okay, that makes sense. So when people want to implement this in the past, uh, you know, we've had this tooling preview for MSIX app attached for, I think since last Ignite. And I understand that now we've got some new improvements and announcements around yeah. the WVD portal. So can you show us some of that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let, let me just uh, the, add to that. So at last Ignite, we announced the MSX app attached tooling preview, which were those, uh, at this point, world infamous scripts, PowerShell scripts that uh, me and one of uh, the PMs on the dev team wrote to be able to uh, do the the four stages of MSX app attached, which are staging, registration, deregistration, and destaging. So you as an IT professional, if you wanted to go and exercise those, you have to go and finish with GPOs, with login scripts and uh, log off scripts, startup, startup. So that is the tooling preview. It was there to test the APIs, to test the concept, to test the performance. Now we wanna, and uh, 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 Cam, uh, that the brought, uh, he announced at Ignite that we are working on integrating the whole uh, MSX app attach management experience in the WVD management UI, so in the Azure ARM portal for WVD. And that's what I wanna show next, um, which was already showed at the, so here is the MSX management UI in the portal. The very first step is to associate your package with the host pool. So uh, the package itself has to be already in Azure. It has to be on a file share that's accessible by the VM. So that was part of the, the setup of the prep of the environment. And here I've selected one of my host pool uh, called stress test app attach, or MSX app attach stress test. Then here you can see that there's a new option, MSX packages. When you click on that, you will be able to see all the packages that are associated with your host pool. Or if you want, you can add a new uh, package here. And the first thing we're going to take from you is obviously the path to where that package is. It's an SMB uh, path. Then what is going to happen is we're going to parse that package and we'll be able to say, um, sorry, we're going to be able to pass that image and we're able to say, going back to that first slide I was showing with the, uh, the different scenarios, we'll, we'll pass that and we'll tell you, like, we see multiple packages, we see multiple applications, which one do you want? At that point, we have these um, um, two very uh, important functions here, the registration type and the state. So the active state, that could be a, 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 a nice conversation by itself, uh, but that is how you do updates. So you upload the new packages in active, and you go and flip the old one uh, from active to inactive, and this one becomes active. 
And the on-demand versus walk-on blocking, that is uh, around the performance of the application. If you want fast start time, but you don't care about the walk-on time, you go for the walk-on blocking. And if you want the optimal uh, fast users login, then you go for on-demand. Once the, the package has been associated uh, with your host pool, you need to publish it in an app group or a desktop uh, group. And that will happen obviously at the app group level. So here I have selected an application group and under applications, we get the new option for MSX packages. Now, if this was a remote desktop, we won't be seeing the file path and start menu. We'll be seeing just the MSX package. And then once we select the MSX package, here we'll be enumerating the list that we already have of packages associated. You'll be able to select one and then the rest gets populated for you. So this is the new management UI that uh, we are gonna be releasing later this year. Yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, so I, I think nobody that viewed this uh, viewed this uh, this episode has seen this before because this is really exclusive uh, like information. So regarding storing and saving your MSAX app attached packages, what do you recommend to use as like? solution or platform as a service solution on Azure to store those uh, packages yep. on? Great question. Uh, thanks for that one, Christian. So there, there are, uh, I mentioned about this, there's some uh, performance limitations. Uh, Azure Files itself has uh, two, 2,000 open file handles on one object. So if you're using Azure Files and you have an environment larger than uh, uh, 2,000 uh, VMs, you will likely need uh, either to generate two instances of your uh, VHD and split it into uh, host pools, or and then from there to application groups and ends up really ugly, really fast. Or you need to start exploring uh, alternative um, uh, storage fabrics. Um, so pretty much everything that applies for uh, as requirements for FS Logic profiles goes for FS uh, for MSX app attach uh, with the added caveat that we don't have that heavy spikes when using MSX Appetite when you have with um, FS Logic when you have the, the boot walk on store. And additionally, the way MSX Appetite is done, we need all read only permissions on the file share. So you don't have to worry about figuring out like who needs read, who needs write. Everybody needs read only. The machines that are in your host pool need read only permissions and the users need read only permissions as we don't change the content of the MSX and we don't allow it to be changeable. Uh, from then, I've uh, been asked, like, what's the biggest file that you can put in a VHD? Well, I think it's two terabytes, whatever the size of the VHD is. There's nothing in MSX app attached that limits that. The biggest application that I've seen done in the wild, it was, I think it was like 24 gigabytes. Uh, and guess what? It stages in a second and a half, so it's pretty, pretty good uh, performance. Uh, also, uh, there's a flip side, and this is a good point to talk about CMFS and the new uh, format that we mentioned about. Um, VHDs generally have this uh, slightly heavier, and VHDXs have this slightly heavier impact on memory utilization and CPU utilization. Uh, generally, during the staging phase, which when we when we do the mounting, um, you could have situations where we max out the CPU on that machine because we are trying to process the VHDs, and the bigger the VHDs, the more echoes we have to um, calculate. Well, with CMFS, we don't have to do any echoes. Because so CMFS is read only by default, so we just say, here it is, no accurate. Now, the way we go around it, it doesn't have impact on the user experience, is because we do the staging at VM boot. So it's part of, uh, before users have to get in, the VM has to be running. As soon as the VM is running, the RD agent has to start talking back to the service. When it starts talking back to the service, at that point, the agent know, oh, I have this extra homework that I need to do, and it stages. Um, so we've done tests with about 250 staging. It takes uh, less than, uh, five uh, seconds to stage mount 250 VHDs. So these are some of the, the numbers that um, we have um, captured so far. We'll have better numbers for the public preview on limitations and um, bottlenecks. Okay. Oh, that was good as an answer. Yeah, that, that's a great answer. And that's really fast to add, like in such a short amount of time, uh, so many applications to your virtual desktop environment. So um, could you share some of like 
examples in a virtual environment where you add like multiple applications at once uh, via like virtual virtual hard drives. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. So um, I have my um, uh, virtual machine here. It's part of a WVD environment, so it already has the RD agent installed. Um, and I'm not going to use any PowerShell. I'm going to use only two commands to start and restart the service. So you can see I have the RD agent installed. And at the moment, if you go into the disk management, you will see uh, disk management is hiding from you, from me. So here we have disk management. And you can see we have just the profiles for my users. So I have my workout admin, my workout account, uh, so my Active Directory admin, and my profile, because I'm also logged in. So nothing here, right? Five files, C drive, three profiles, temp storage. Now, so if I do a mount ball, what we're gonna see here is a large amount of VHDs being staged. It's quite a lot of them, about 20. So if we go into the disk manager, of oh, disk management, I'm calling it the wrong thing. So here, the disk management, it's not optimized to handle 20 VHDs, so you see it's like taking its sweet time. But here you can see that we have 20 plus applications being staged and ready for our users to use. Uh, to use. And let's find the biggest one here, just to see how long it took for that one. So we have five megabytes. That's not definitely the biggest one. So here is one that's a, a gigabyte, eight gigabytes, and there should be one that's 20, because this is my test chair. I can't find it right now, but uh, yeah, uh, this is, without any code, we were able to register those applications, and now if I go with my user inside, uh, when the user walks in, we'll be able to see what of those applications we need to register to that user, and he or she will be able to interact with the staged and registered applications. Okay, so thanks for this uh, this cool demo. This really shows how uh, how much applications you can, uh, for example, inject without touching the image. Uh, so before we wrap up, uh, are there any like antivirus kind of exclusions customers should consider while using MSX Appetite? Yeah, from that perspective, the the same constraints that uh, we have for FS Logic apply. Since we are mounting VHDs and SIMs, just make sure that you're not scanning those. Um, there's no really a risk there because they're read-only, uh, meaning like uh, we are processing them, and even if there's malicious code that should have been part of the MSX package, it should have been code signed uh, with a trusted certificate. Um, so from that perspective, the um, the fact that you're excluding VHDs from being scanned will be the uh, will be easy to justify by the fact that they're read-only and code signed. Yeah, but this will be that one user that we had on the machine earlier. So at Wogon, we'll see some of the applications that uh, were registered for that user. So while that's opening, uh, a quick question on that signing yeah. script. Uh, does it have to be from like a, a public cert authority or can I use one that's from my own environment? Well, um, this is more like an MSX question. And uh, the general answer is we don't really care as long as it's signed. And as long as that certificate is then delivered on the host pool machines. So if you're using your own certificate, you got to make it as part of your image building process to make sure that that certificate is there, because otherwise we won't register it. So that's why it's better to use a publicly trusted certificate. Let's say if you got an application from the store and you put it on your um, host pool via MSX app attach, we'll do the magic to grab that certificate because it's publicly trusted. But if it's private, you got you got to do the due diligence, right? And here, uh, one of the applications that I have was Minecraft Education Edition delivered as MSX app attach. <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks, Stefan. It's been uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, how can people follow you on social media? Uh, yeah, so I do have a Twitter account. Uh, what was it? Uh, STG3, like 3 RGI. Um, and that's about it. I 
post stuff around MSX app attached mainly. Um, but if you're interested, yeah, you'll find me there. I'm not super active, but I'm there. Um, and we have the MSX community and WVD tech community. So I'm much more active there. So if you have questions for me there, just please, uh, that will be the best place uh, to reach out to me. Uh, so then I can actually get to your answer and give you an answer. All right. So thanks everybody for joining us for another episode of Desktops in the Cloud. Please be sure that you click the subscribe button and the like button if you're enjoying our content. And don't forget that notification bell so you get a email when our new videos come out. Thanks for joining us for all the latest info on WBD. We'll see you next time.